Greetings, everyone. It's update time. Comics and Blu-rays and a game. Oh, my. Let's check them out today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. I was just going to do the comics and books today because it's Wednesday, it's comic book day, but I thought, uh, you know what, I don't have a lot of other stuff, so why don't I just do everything all in one big massive update. So here we go, comic books. I had fallen a little bit behind in some of my, uh, you know, series that I like to collect, so uh, I decided to get up to date on most of them. There's still a couple others I need to uh, track down. Um, if you watched the Doctor Who video yesterday, you'll know that I picked up the latest issue of the Fourth Doctor Adventures. Just quickly throw that out there. Um, so let's see what else I got. All right, here we go. So first up, had to get the latest issues of this one. You know I've been collecting it and enjoying it immensely. Got issue 16 of Gem and the Holograms. So this is the sixth part uh, the concluding part of the Dark Gem storyline, which has been going for a while. And then we get the start of a new storyline with issue number 17 of Gem and the Holograms. So, there we go. I think it's just a two-part story right now, and then uh, on to something else after that. <clears throat> and then next up, as you know, I've been collecting these and enjoying them immensely, and uh, will probably continue to do so for as long as they last. Picked up issue three of Scooby Apocalypse. Yeah, doesn't look like the Scooby-Doo you might know, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why I made those weird noises, but uh, it, it's out there. It's immortalized on video now. Uh, and then, of course, picked up... I had, was all raves about this one when it came out, and uh, boy, it just it looks even more awesome now. We have issue number two. Of Wacky Raceland. Absolutely beautiful post apocalyptic madness. And then we picked up issue two of Future Quest. Very nice indeed. And then I guess this just came out issue three of Future Quest. And there we go. Honestly, I mean, I, I've been collecting these since they came out, and I don't know what more I can really say about them that I haven't already said about them. Uh, it's still kind of early days, but uh, check it out. So this is a new one. Uh, this is the last of the Hanna-Barbera uh, sort of reimaginings. We have the Flintstones. Now this one I will talk about a little bit because I haven't uh, discussed it before. The Flintstones. So we have this new update. I'll put it here so we get a little more variety. Uh, new update of the Flintstones, more sort of, uh, you know, realistic art style. If we take a look here, this is, uh, this is Bedrock. Very nice. And then we have, uh, you know, Fred at the Quarry, going to talk to Mr. Slate. Very familiar elements here. Um, now... That said, I, I found this to be kind of strange um, because some of the things that happen in it seem almost a little too mean-spirited. Like, Mr. Slate is really a jerk in this uh, to the point where uh, there's a scene where he has a dinner party and he sends out one of the guests to uh, go kill a mammoth to... Uh, uh, for their dinner and uh, rather than going to kill it himself and uh, and the guy gets killed basically and he's just like oh oh well I guess we'll just have something else for dinner and I'm like wow that was harsh <laughs> and uh, Fred and Barney are both uh, veterans of the Paleolithic Wars so they go to support group meetings for other uh, veterans dealing with their uh, issues and whatnot and uh, Wilma is a, uh, a, a struggling artist. She's trying to do uh, some art. Well, in her case, it's handprints. And, um, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's just a bunch of handprints and such. But then she tells the story of why 
she does handprints as her art and it's just the most heartbreaking and touching story uh, so this is, it, it has a very different tone from the Flintstones that we're used to. It's almost more of a dramedy than the the more sort of Honeymooners-esque comedy that the original uh, cartoon was. So um, I, I'm definitely intrigued, we'll say that. Um, I'm not going to flat out say that I like it just yet, uh, but I'm definitely intrigued and I'm going to stick with it for a few more issues and kind of see where they're going with it. Um but uh, so far, it, see, it sounds interesting. Uh, it's definitely one of those ones you don't want to sort of go in with too many preconceived ideas of what you want it to be, because that's, that's not what these are. These are very different takes on these classic characters. Uh, the only one, really, that's sort of a straight-up nostalgia blast is Future Quest, which is very much in tune with uh, the way those characters were back in the day and uh, doesn't really do much in the way of altering them other than bringing them all together excuse me, for the first time ever, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, Wacky Raceland, Flintstones, and Scooby Apocalypse are all very different takes on the uh, classic characters that we all know and love. And um, so far of all of them, I think Wacky Raceland is the, uh, is, is the most successful. Uh, Scooby Apocalypse is, is a close second. Uh, as I say, I'm kind of a sucker for post-apocalyptic stuff anyway, so that's, that kind of thing is right up my alley. But... Uh, yeah, so enjoying those two very much and willing to give the Flintstones a couple more issues. And Future Quest, uh, I actually still have to sit down and read Future Quest all the way through. I just, I read I read the first issue, but uh, I have to read the, the other two. But uh, I like where it's going so far. It's definitely a lot of fun and definitely feels like, you know, those action-adventure cartoons of yesteryear. Next up, picked up a couple of paperback books, uh, which basically fill in some long-standing gaps in my collection, uh, one of which is Heretics of Dune, which is the fifth book in the original six-book Dune cycle by uh, Frank Herbert before he passed away. There have been numerous other Dune books since, written by uh, Brian Herbert, his son, and uh, Kevin J. Anderson, uh, which I understand are also quite good, but not quite as good as the originals. Um, at the very least, I, I may read those other ones at some point, but at the very least, I've been wanting to read the original six. Um, and I've had five of the original six. Remember I always talk about that box of books that went missing? Yeah, I originally had the first six books, or the original six books of Dune, in that box, and they all went missing. Um... So, being very picky about my reacquisitions, I wanted to get the exact same editions that I used to have. Uh, some minor alterations, though. This is uh, an earlier printing of the paperback that actually has the title embossed. If you see that there, it's all shiny and bumpy. Very nice. And uh, overall, this is in pretty nice condition. I mean, the spine doesn't really have any creasing on it. Uh, a little rough on the edges, but, uh, but overall, actually uh, a very very clean edition uh considering how old these paperbacks are so pretty cool very excited to have that so finally i've got the first six books again in uh, the original paperback editions that i had um, or slightly better editions of the same you know versions that i had i don't like the newer editions because they they kind of clip this artwork and i really like the cover art on these so I wanted the full cover art as it originally appeared on these particular paperback editions and uh, and such. And also, you know, just the, 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 the spine style, like the font and everything, it all goes together very nicely. It doesn't line up perfectly. Just it, it has a similar aesthetic to it on the spines, which is quite nice and uh, and looks great on the shelf. And then next up, uh, this, this is, um, I should mention... I have had this book and this book in my collections for a very, very long time. Basically, since these came out. These are, uh, this isn't quite a first printing. I think this one is. Let me look here. So, Star Wars, over 5 million in print. What are we going to do with all of them? Um, okay, this is definitely not the first printing. This is the 25th printing <laughs> from March of 1981. Uh, yeah. So the first Canadian printing was January 1977. The fourth Canadian printing was November 80. Oh, I guess this is the fourth Canadian printing. 
or the 25th overall printing. Interesting. I'm not sure why they make that so confusing. Anyway, the original book of Star Wars, which uh, I think was actually ghostwritten, says it was by George Lucas, but I'm pretty sure this was ghostwritten by somebody. Um, where is it here? Does it say? Sometimes they say in the uh, indicia. Back cover art. No. I remember the uh, uh, Mac Bolan, and the Executioner books were ghostwritten, and they would always say, special thanks to so-and-so for his contributions to this book. And the special thanks to so-and-so was actually the name of the ghostwriter. So it was kind of cool that, uh, um, what was it, Gold Eagle Books uh, did the, um, uh, you know, actually identified the ghostwriters in there, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, Empire Strikes Back. So this is the original novel. Which printing is this? This is first edition. This is, oh, this is a first printing. First special printing. The so first edition, May 1980. First special printing, August 1980. So this is the first special printing of the Empire Strikes Back paper. But very, very nice condition, actually. I've kept this in really nice shape over the years. And, uh, yeah. So I only needed one. I've also got Splinter of the Mind's Eye, by the way, a pretty early printing of that, which was the first sort of uh, expanded universe book ever. Um, and then we have uh, Return of the Jedi. It's very cool. Well, I guess I shouldn't say expanded universe. I guess the first sequel book, because there was also the Han Solo books. But I can't remember if they came before or after. So we got Return of the Jedi, and it is first printing, June 1983. How cool is that? So I finally have the original. It's, Spine's got, it's obviously been well read. But uh, but that's okay. So now, at long last, I have all three of the original paperback books of the original Star Wars trilogy. So very cool to finally have that set complete. Now, speaking of alternate editions of things... You may recall a little while ago I picked this up, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Well, I picked it up again. <laughs> no uh, no bar on uh, on the second one. But the reason being, check this out, is the original edition. And you may notice a slight difference here. This has the yellow UPC code. This is the one that has that erroneous uh, shot from the movie in the director's cut fixed so this is the fixed edition this is the 100 percent perfect edition yellow barcode this is the one you want so avoid this one if you see it because it's got the error um but it looks like uh now finally we're starting to see the uh the fixed version appear on, on shelves uh this was this was only like 11 bucks which is crazy cheap for a blu-ray of this caliber um so, I mean, all told, I think I paid maybe 20 bucks, 25 bucks for both of them, which is essentially the price of, like, a new release. So I'm not overly concerned about that. And uh, I said at the time I was going to buy the fixed version because, you know, I want to fully support this release in the hopes that they will perhaps do remasters of the other movies. Uh, this does seem to be selling really well. It keeps selling out every time I see it, so that's a good sign. Um, so here's hoping that we get remasters of the other movies. Can we please get an edition of the motion picture, the first movie, that has all the different cuts? The theatrical cut, the special longer edition, and the director's edition with the effects redone in high def. Uh, the company that did the effects for that has said that they still have the original project files. They could easily re-render the effects in high definition resolution. It would not be a problem. They can do that. They just need the go-ahead and the money to, uh, you know, cover the, the time it would take to do so. So, come on, Paramount. Let's let's make that happen. Seriously. Get, give us give us Uber editions of stuff. Um, next up, I didn't buy a lot of Blu-rays lately. Uh, it's been kind of a slow month, uh, you know, paying a lot of bills and whatnot. I uh, did pick this one up out of the $5 bin. South Park, bigger, longer, uncut. I've never actually seen it. Can you believe that? Yeah. Well, it's the truth. Now I can see it. Uh, Rosie actually spotted this one for me. I wasn't going to get anything that day. And she just take, took a quick look in the $5 bin. It's like, oh, Daddy, look, they have the South Park movie. She does not watch South Park, by the way. Don't worry. Uh, only age-appropriate stuff uh, for the most part. 
But, uh, yeah, this is one that she's definitely going to have to wait until she's older to see. Um, and she understands that. So, But anyway, she thought I would like it, so she pointed it out. And then, of course, I think everybody and their dog bought this one this week. Uh, picked up the Ultimate Edition of Batman vs. Superman. 3D, of course. There we go. Very nice lenticular cover. I have not watched this yet. Uh, there will probably be some kind of review. Re 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 I might even rewatch Man of Steel actually prior to this because it's been a, like a couple years since I've seen Man of Steel. I meant to review Man of Steel at the time when I actually watched it for the first time and just kept putting it off and putting it off and forgetting. And now it's so long ago, I would basically need to rewatch it to review it properly. Uh, and then finally, picked up a game. You can expect a full playthrough of this game for the Halloween season. Those of you who watch me live on Twitch may be able to catch it a little bit earlier. Because I'm actually doing the Halloween playthroughs right now, actually, on Twitch. Well, not. Well, I might be on right this second when you're watching this, or, or not. If I am, you'll see a little notification down in the... One one of the, one of the corners there. You say live right now on Twitch. I have it notify on YouTube, but um, yeah, but wanted to check this one out for quite a while. Heard it's scary as hell and uh, the best game ever made for this franchise. We have Alien Isolation, the Nostromo edition. So this has the DLC level featuring the original cast of Alien reprising their roles and doing. Uh, a few levels that take place actually in the Nostromo at the time of the, you know, during events of the original movie, which is pretty cool. So that's included on here, and I will be playing that as well. Um, yeah, I've not watched any playthroughs. Uh, I basically, I want to go in totally cold to this, so I've been avoiding it like the plague this whole time until I got around to picking it up and uh, finally got my hands on it. It's all installed, ready to rock and roll. So, uh, yeah, at the time of this recording, as far as the live playthroughs go, I'm actually right in the middle of doing Bioshock 2. So if you want to see that live prior to Halloween, you can catch it on Twitch. I'm about a third of the way through it right now. Um, otherwise, those videos will appear on uh, YouTube for uh, in October. Uh, and then as soon as I finish that, I'm going to be getting into this one. And, uh, yeah, good times. All right. So some uh, lots of scary games coming for Halloween. So I've got all those go good to go for uh, you know doing them in advance so that there will be playthroughs already ready to go for Halloween. And then um, um, I'll be playing other scary games live during the month of October. So there will be double gaming action that month, uh, as well as tons and tons and tons of horror movie reviews. I've got quite a lot planned for this Halloween. Alrighty, so yeah, kind of a, a fun grab bag of stuff. Got some cool, cool goodies there for the collection. Not too much in the way of movies, but hey, whatever. Kind of focusing more on the books right now because uh, you know there's some that I want and uh, <laughs> they're cheaper than movies. But uh, yeah, alrighty, that is it for this update. So quick thank you to my Patreon sponsors. Thanks, Patreon sponsors. You guys and gals are awesome. Special big thanks to Kyle Pellegree and Get Your Gorgeous On, my two highest level sponsors. Really appreciate the support, guys. Uh, Get Your Gorgeous On is, of course, the wonderful EMAG maintained by Michelle O'Toole and Simon Hedger. So check it out when you get a chance. Alrighty, that is it from me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching and sayonara. <laughs>